Hello and welcome to All Top Fives. Today we're looking at some of the most cruel torture methods and devices ever invented or used during the Middle Ages and ancient times. Torture has long been used as a way of extracting information or inflicting punishment. We often see it in historical movies, but is it portrayed accurately? Were any of these methods ever actually used? Although it's been prohibited by law in most countries, there are many accounts of these dreadful inventions having been used, and some devices can still be seen in museums today. I'll say now for the record that I don't condone torture in any way, for any reason. These are all pretty gruesome, and definitely not for the faint of heart. You have been warned. Number 5. Rat Torture the use of rats as a torture method has been documented historically and described often in works of fiction, though they have been reported as being used as recently as the 1980s. It came in many different variations, but all are just as effective, painful and despicable. One method used by the Dutch in the 16th century on prisoners involved placing live rats into a large bowl or pot. The prisoner was tied to the floor and had the pot secured upside down on their stomach so the rats would walk around on their bare skin. Hot coals or torches would then be placed onto the bowl, causing it to heat up massively and the rats became more desperate to escape. After a short time, the rats would claw and bite at the victim's body, slowly gnawing their way into the internal organs in a bid for freedom. This caused huge pain and usually death. In the Tower of London, home to many tortures and executions, it's rumoured that there was an atrocious prison beneath the ground known as the Dungeon of Rats. As the building is situated right beside the River Thames, this dungeon, which was just below the high water level, would become flooded at high tide. In pitch black darkness, prisoners were alleged to attract brown rats from the river with their screams, and the starving rats would tear the flesh from their limbs. If true, prisoners in this dungeon really wouldn't have survived for very long, as the risk of bleeding to death or succumbing to infection was so great. When these rats used to be kept by torturers to put into tubes that led inside victims' bodies or placed in pots to eat the victims, the rats were often kept starving, which just adds to the sheer cruelty of the torture method. The term rat torture seems to apply to both the victims and the rats. Number 4. The Rack Are you still with me? Good. This is one of the most recognisable methods that people think of when they hear the word torture. Using the rack was a horribly slow way of inflicting pain upon victims. Dating back to the rule of the Roman Emperor Nero in 65 AD, people such as assassins and conspirators were put to the rack as a way of extracting information or confessions from them. Because the rack was so frightful, criminals were sometimes forced to watch others being racked, scaring them into telling their secrets. The rack was a raised wooden frame with a roller at each end, and a handle that could turn these rollers. The victim's wrists were tied to one roller, and their ankles were tied to another with rope. Sometimes chains were used instead, making the rack even stronger. If the victim didn't give up any information, the torturer would turn the handle slowly, causing the ropes to tighten, and the victim's arms and legs to start stretching. The tension would increase so much that the pain began to get unbearable, and the victim's limbs dislocated or broke with loud cracks. This obviously caused intense pain, and often rendered the victim's limbs completely useless afterwards. Sometimes the torturer would even continue turning the handle until the arms and legs were actually torn off from the body, as an even worse end to the victim's suffering. As if this horrific punishment wasn't bad enough, in France an even more hideous version was invented. Under the victim's back were placed extra rollers covered in spikes and barbs, which caused yet more pain and usually broke the spine during stretching. More involved torturers would sometimes take advantage of the victim's vulnerable position on the rack by burning them with hot irons or naked flames, or even pulling out finger and toenails with specially designed tools. No one knows when the rack was last used as a torture device, but it was commonly used in England even into the 18th century. Guy Fawkes, infamous for his role in the gunpowder plot in the 1600s, is believed to have been subjected to the rack as part of his torture before he was executed. Truly cruel and unusual punishment. Number 3. The Head Crusher Now this one is not for the squeamish. The Head Crusher is a torture device that historians believed was used during the Spanish Inquisition, a time of unrelenting torture and terror, as well as throughout the Middle Ages. 
The head crusher sort of resembles a fun helicopter hat at first glance, but I can assure you that that's no fun helicopter hat. It was a metal frame that housed a head cap attached to a large handle or screw. The unfortunate victim would be placed into the frame with the lowest metal bar under their chin and the head cap on top of their head. The torturer would slowly begin twisting the handle above, forcing the head cap down lower and lower. As you can guess, little by little, this began to compress the victim's skull. This caused the bones in the face to begin breaking and the teeth and jaws to be shattered and crushed very slowly, before their eyeballs popped out of their sockets and the whole skull collapsed in on itself when the poor victim would have died in excruciating pain. It's thought that most people put to the head crusher would have been executed this way. However, it's likely that people may have confessed due to the torturer stopping turning the handle and leaving them in pain for long periods of time. Or perhaps some torturers brought the head cap back up to provide some relief for the victim only to start crushing again, a vile psychological tactic. However far they got during the process, any head crusher survivors would have had irreversible damage to their facial structure and jaws and permanent brain damage. There's even a rumour that one type of head crusher sported two special collection containers placed in front of the eyeballs to catch them when they were squeezed out. Not much is known about who would have been submitted to this heinous torture, nor who would have carried it out, but the head crusher sits firmly within the top five most barbaric and sickening historical torture devices. Number two, the brazen bull. You still keeping your lunch down after that last one? Well, I've chosen the brazen bull for number two because of how much inventive design and craftsmanship went into creating such a nasty form of torture. Also used for executions, the bull, also known as the Sicilian bull or bronze bull, was designed and first built in ancient Greece. It was a hollow, life-sized bull statue that had a door in one side of it. The bull's victim was forced inside through the door, then locked in and trapped. A fire was then lit beneath the bull, and the flames slowly heated the bronze until it was roasting hot. There was no ventilation, so the victim, inside what was essentially a large oven, slowly began roasting to death. What made this so horrific is the slow, agonising death the victim suffered, as the heat would have dried out their eyes, mouth and skin, and burned whatever body parts were touching the floor of the bronze prison, until they finally died of severe burns or asphyxiation. Even worse was the way the tubes and inner architecture of the bull's head were engineered, so that the dying screams of the person inside sounded like a bellowing bull, a twisted, cruel, artistic finish. There's a darkly ironic story about the inventor of the brazen bull. In Athens, a man called Perios designed and built the bull under instruction from the ruling general at the time, a tyrant known as Phalaris, accused of cannibalism and extreme cruelty. Perios informed Phalaris of the pipes and the bellowing bull sound from the victim, hoping that this would appeal to him. Phalaris instead threw the inventor inside the bull and ordered a fire to be lit. After he could hear Perios' screams beginning in the form of the bellowing bull, he ordered that Perios, half dead, be taken out and executed. There have been several references to death by Brazen Bull in historical documents and literature, but whether they're true or not, the Brazen Bull is a cruel invention indeed. Number 1. The Choke Pair Also known as the Pair of Anguish, this has made my list at number 1 because of how gruesome and invasive it is. Not a lot is known about this device, as there are no written descriptions of its use. However, experts in medieval studies believe that the choke pair was a humiliating form of torture used by bandits in 17th century Holland. It's also believed that it was used as a symbolic punishment for liars and blasphemers in the Middle Ages. The device was a simple metal contraption that slowly opened into four rounded segments at the turn of a screw at one end. Most were ghoulishly decorated with demons' faces, flowers, or ornate metalwork. It was placed in the victim's mouth in the closed position, with the screw pointing out. Sometimes it was left like this as a humiliating and effective gag, but it was alleged to have been taken to further extremes. The torturer would slowly turn the screw while the choke pair was in the victim's mouth. This would prevent them from being able to speak or swallow, as the rounded segments would expand, forcing their jaws apart. 
This would eventually lead to shattered teeth, a dislocated jaw, and tearing across the face. Some of these devices have been found with spikes on the rounded segments, designed to cause even more pain within the mouth by piercing the flesh. A truly vulgar and horrifying variation on the choke pair was also thought to have been used around the same time on women accused of performing abortions and homosexual men. It was designed to be used in a similar fashion, but in another body area, rather than their mouth. I'm sure you can imagine what I'm talking about, but it's so disgusting in fact that I don't actually want to go into it in this video. Nevertheless, it's a depraved form of torture that is easily one of the most sickening ever invented. And with a shudder, that's it from all top fives for this week. Do you agree with my top five? If you've heard of any worse medieval torture methods, post them in the comments below. When you're posting your comments, please be respectful and considerate of others' opinions and beliefs. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, it really does help me out, and you can subscribe for a new video every Tuesday. Peace and love to each and every one of you, and I'll see you next time on All Top Fives.